uh, two preparatory comments. This is an unusual report for the Washington Post. Um, uh, for a couple of decades, we have always been um, you know, all Middle East all the time. Uh, um, and our geographic area of focus has almost solely been the Middle East. This report takes us into a, um, uh, into a new area. Um, uh, uh, really, I think, the first time um, that a major institute task force report has addressed topics that extend beyond the Middle East into Europe, and even uh, we touch on domestic issues and how um, uh, the United States should, um, as a government, um, deal um, effectively with um, uh, Muslim Americans to ensure um, deeper cooperation between government agencies and various Muslim um, American organizations and, and aspects of Muslim American society in order to ensure that the of radicalization does not enter our shores. Um, so I want to underscore that. This is really new for us. Um, uh, secondly, I wanted to underscore another of the key principles which we enunciate right at the beginning of the report, and which is really um, one of the main headlines of this report, which is um, uh, our report suggests that uh, um, uh, the, uh, we shouldn't define the problem um, as stopping violence. We shouldn't only define the problem as stopping violence that comes from, um, uh, that emanates from uh, radical uh, Islamic extremism. Rather, we need to start to define the problem um, much earlier in the process. If we want to prevent um, effectively, if we want to prevent uh, the emergence of violence, we need to, to address the problem much earlier in the cycle. And that is um, Therefore, we need to define the problem as countering the ideology that, uh, that feeds and that attracts and that recruits and that eventually spawns the violence that, uh, that is so dangerous. We need to start earlier in the process. That's a key theme of this report. And almost all of the objectives, almost all the recommendations in this report target that, which is how can we effectively um, uh, promote uh, policies which target that earlier stage in this process. It's not the violence, it's the ideology. And what can we do to, uh, to address that? And the, the basic idea is um, that we need to empower mainstream Muslims for themselves competing against the ideology of radical Islam extremism. That's the basic thrust, the, 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 the core idea. Now, when we move more specifically to um, the set of issues that uh, 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 my focus, um, uh, strategic communication, public diplomacy, the point here is very simple. First, there is um, uh, a sort of uh, debate about what is the meaning of and what is the thrust of uh, public diplomacy, especially in the post-9-11 world. Is it to uh, enhance the American brand or is it something else? Is it, in fact, this, um, the effort to um, uh, empower mainstream Muslims to uh, effectively compete against uh, uh, radical Islamists? We argue, not surprisingly, we argue it is the latter. Now, people in this room may think that is a very straightforward analysis. In fact, I think it's somewhat of a controversial analysis. It is not an analysis which is overwhelmingly held. It is not an analysis which is universally supported. There are, there are indeed important actors in administrations, current and, and past, which argue differently, which argue that, in fact, the main thrust of public diplomacy ought to be enhancing America's brand abroad. Uh, we disagree, and we think that the main thrust of uh, what is new and novel about public diplomacy in the current era is that it should be about identifying, nurturing, and supporting mainstream Muslims in the contest against radical extremism. That has all sorts of implications. Um, uh, uh, Lauren just outlined what we need to do to, uh, to assist in the human service uh, delivery competition, which exists not just in Lebanon and the West Bank and Gaza, but in countries around the world, somewhere we don't think are facing problems of radicalism, but actually are on a very local level. Um, these are uh, countries um, that are Muslim-majority countries, and these are countries that are not Muslim.
vast majority of countries. Um, uh, these can be in Europe. Um, these can be in Africa, in Asia. Um, and so I think it's very important that we underscore that point. Um, a second principle that we underscore is the principle of diversity. That um, uh, it is extremely important for the United States government in its dealings with Muslim communities, dealings with Muslim societies, to underscore the principle of diversity. Not that we are working solely with secular organizations, not that we are working solely with religious organizations, but that we celebrate the principle of diversity. Because one of the main ideas that we try to enunciate is to provide alternatives. Not a single alternative, not an alternative which is, you know, made in America, but a spectrum of alternatives to Muslim youth, Muslim women, Muslim um, uh, workers, Muslim uh, uh, activists, Muslim students, alternatives. And we should therefore promote um, a kaleidoscope of political, religious, economic alternatives, diversity. Diversity is also a principle that we, um, that we uh, underscore um, for relations between the government and the Muslim communities here in the United States. No single Muslim organization, um, no single certifying body, um, no single um, uh, accountable uh, institution should be the gatekeeper for Muslim Americans into the White House, into the State Department. There needs to be a diversity of engagement. Um, this is the way the United States should engage abroad, and this is what we urge at home. In terms more specifically with um, uh, the U.S. government and public diplomacy abroad, we urge um, uh, a greater in, um, uh, investment of the sense of mission that I spoke about, a greater investment of that mission into our public diplomacy machinery, empowering that machinery, and we talk about uh, what needs to be done to strengthen the existing uh, capabilities of um, the effective commander-in-chief of our uh, public diplomacy effort, the Under Secretary of State for Public Diplomacy. We, um, the need to strengthen this uh, within the State Department by, uh, uh, by uh, uh, the creation of um, uh, additional um, uh, bureaucratic heft, uh, the creation of Assistant Secretary, that would, that would be a repository for activity in counter-radicalization, the creation of the expansion of a, of a novel program which exists in the European Bureau, um, uh, uh, with um, uh, an outreach function to, um, uh, to address the issues of um, uh, Muslims in Europe, but an expansion of that across regional bureaus and integrating that with the Public Diplomacy Bureau. We talk about the important role of international broadcasting. International broadcasting, of course, um, in our system, uh, operates separate from the State Department, um, but it, uh, it controls about half of all public diplomacy funds, and we talk about the importance of infusing our international broadcasting with the same sense of mission um, that, uh, that we believe our, ex our public diplomacy should, um, should be infused with in all of our engagements abroad, and the importance of, of strengthening um, that sense of mission um, through our broadcasting in Arab and Muslim societies, and even in, in uh, societies outside of uh, the Middle East. Um, uh, this is the basic thrust of our of our suggestions on, on, uh, on uh, public diplomacy, and they tie, in our approach, they tie very closely with the overall strategy. The strategy, just to conclude, is to rewrite the narrative. It is to undermine Al-Qaeda's narrative that if you are a lonely, poor, um, uh, um, uh, outsider um, in Lahore or Casablanca, or Nairobi, or Jakarta, to undermine the narrative that says that you are all connected to one greater um, uh, movement that views the West as your enemy. We want to undermine that narrative and rewrite it and to address your local concerns, to address you specifically, to lower the decibel level of, the, of this perception of a clash of civilizations, and to ensure that you do not, that you have other choices to make. And so your only choice is not to join an organization that will send you off on a track to put on a suicide belt. You need other choices. And our strategy is to get you early in the process and to empower you to make a different